Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. In the early hours of July 13th, 1959, an extraordinary event took place on a small farm near Blenheim in New Zealand. This incident would come to be known as the Morland Encounter, named after its primary witness, Eileen Morland. The following is a retelling of the events that transpired that morning based on Mrs Morland's account and subsequent investigations. It was 5.30am when Eileen Morland began her day as she had done countless times before. The air was crisp and cold, typical of New Zealand winter morning. A thick blanket of clouds hung low in the sky, estimated at about 2,000 feet. Mrs Morland, dressed warmly against the chill, set out across the paddock towards the cow barn, torch in hand, to bring in the small herd for milking. As she made her way across the field, something unusual caught her attention. A strange green glow was illuminating the low-hanging clouds above. At first, she thought it might be the moon, but quickly realised it was in the wrong position. Suddenly, two bright green lights, which Mrs Morland would later describe as looking like eyes, burst through the cloud cover. These lights were encircled by a band of orange, creating an otherworldly spectacle in the pre-dawn sky. The green illumination bathed the entire area in an eerie glow. Mrs Morland looked down at her hands, seeing them tinged with the same sickly green light. An overwhelming sense of unease washed over her. I shouldn't be here, she thought, causing her to instinctively run for the shelter of the Pinus radiata trees bordering the paddock. From her vantage point among the trees, Mrs Morland watched as a flattish, saucer-shaped object slowly descended from the clouds. It came to a halt about 30 feet above the ground, hovering approximately 15 feet above a group of peach trees. The object was impressive in size, measuring between 20 to 25 feet across and 7.5 to 8 feet in height. The craft's most striking feature was two circumferential rows of what appeared to be jets set into metallic bands at the top and bottom of its main body, about one and a half feet inward from the upper and lower edges of the object. These jets glowed a brilliant orange with greenish centres, fading to yellow at the edges, and emitted a faint hissing noise. As the craft hovered motionless about 40 yards away in the centre of the paddock, its jets suddenly shut off, only to reappear at a slight angle. Then, in a display that seemed to defy physics, each band of jets began to counter-rotate at high speed, the top band from right to left and the bottom from left to right. The rotation increased to such a velocity that the bands of light became continuous, resembling halos. The air was filled with a loud humming sound accompanied by the hissing of the jets. Notably absent were the typical noises associated with conventional aircraft engines. Instead, there was an otherworldly resonant quality to the sounds emanating from the craft. As Mrs Morland continued to observe, her apprehension grew when she realised the object was occupied. At the top of the craft was a clear glassy dome-like structure filled with a pure white light. Within this dome, she could make out two figures seated one behind the other, facing the same direction and separated by just over an arm's length. These beings were dressed in what appeared to be skin-tight metallic suits that reflected the light and creased with each movement. Suddenly, the figure at the rear stood up and leaned forward on his hands, as if staring out of the dome to examine the farm and barn. During this time, the jets grew brighter and the hum increased in pitch. 
Mrs Morland estimated the being's height to be a little over five feet. Due to his position and the large silvered helmet that covered from shoulder to shoulder, she couldn't discern any facial features. After a brief moment, the rear figure returned to his seated position while the front figure remained motionless. Then, without warning, the craft tilted slightly. The bands of jets ceased their rotation and went dark, only to reignite without spinning. A loud whoosh of air preceded the object's rapid vertical ascent, its body still at a slight angle. The movement was accompanied by a high-pitched whine that Mrs Morland would later describe as almost unbearable. In a matter of seconds, the craft vanished into the cloud cover, its speed unbelievably fast. In its wake, a wave of warm air washed over Mrs Morland, carrying with it a strange, peppery odour that experts would later suggest might have been ozone. For several moments after the craft's departure, Mrs Morland stood rooted to the spot, trying to process what she had just witnessed. Eventually, she gathered her wits and resumed her morning routine, collecting the cows which had been surprisingly unaffected by the extraordinary events, although the incident did cause one or two of them to get up. As she drove the herd to the yard, she heard the town clock strike a quarter to six, indicating that the entire encounter had lasted no more than two or three minutes, though to her it had seemed an eternity. After completing the milking and leaving the milk at the gate as usual, Mrs Morland rushed inside to share her incredible story with her family. Her husband, a member of the Royal New Zealand Air Force, based at nearby Woodbourne, listened intently and urged her to contact the police. Though initially reluctant, fearing ridicule, she made the call and found the authorities to be genuinely interested in her account. In the days that followed, Mrs Morland's encounter became the subject of intense scrutiny. Air Force personnel visited the farm, questioning her thoroughly about her experience. They indicated that residual radiation had been detected at the site where the object was seen hovering. Mrs Morland also underwent a series of audio tone readings in Wellington, supervised by Air Force personnel to determine the frequency of the sounds emitted by the object. These tests placed the hovering noise at 1500 Hz, with the climbing noise rising from this frequency beyond the range of human hearing. The aftermath of the encounter brought unexpected physical effects for Mrs Morland. She developed brown pigmented areas on her face which she reported to her doctor. These patches persisted for years, with the last blotch located over her right eyebrow finally fading away some six years after the incident. The Moreland farm soon became a hotspot for curious onlookers and UFO enthusiasts. People wandered uninvited across the property, leaving gates open and disturbing the livestock. The unwanted attention became so disruptive that the Morlands declared they would keep quiet if they ever witnessed such an event again. Intriguingly, the encounter left physical traces on the farm itself. The row of peach trees, beneath where the UFO had hovered, mysteriously died and had to be removed. Conversely, the grass in the vicinity grew at an accelerated rate, becoming several times taller and much greener than the surrounding areas. The Moreland encounter quickly became a classic case in UFO lore, drawing attention from renowned UFO researchers. Professors James E. MacDonald and J. Allen Hynek, during their respective visits to New Zealand, interviewed Mrs. Moreland and were deeply impressed by her account. In New Zealand, the incident had a profound impact on the local UFO community. It raised questions that challenged the prevailing Adamski approach to UFOs, which was the dominant influence among New Zealand ufologists in 1959. 
the stark differences between what Mrs. Morland described and the Venusian or Saturnian spacecraft promoted by George Adamski led to a collapse of Adamski groups throughout the country. The release of previously classified New Zealand government UFO files in December 2010 brought new intrigue to the case. These documents revealed that as the 1959 investigation progressed, its classification escalated from confidential to top secret. Tantalising details emerged, including a full-height drawing of the being with a high degree of detail regarding its gear and physical characteristics. This suggested that Mrs Morland's encounter might have been even closer than initially reported. In fact, the files hinted at a more dramatic version of events that Mrs Morland had initially been reluctant to share. According to this account, one of the beings actually exited the craft and approached her. She described this entity as like any other man, as far as she could tell, though notably his left hand appeared to be missing below the wrist. In a moment of fear and confusion, the being shouted at her in an unknown language. Panicked, Mrs. Morland swung at it with her torch and fled to the nearby trees. The being then re-entered the hovering craft, which ascended straight up into the sky with a high-pitched whistle, leaving behind a patch of hot air and the distinct odour of burnt pepper. The Morland encounter remains one of the most compelling and well-documented UFO cases in New Zealand's history. Its ongoing intrigue underscores the enduring mystery of unidentified flying objects and their potential extraterrestrial origins.